and we'll be off. Okay, we are live, I am told, so I will open tonight's Lunenburg Select Board meeting of Tuesday, May 11th, 2021. In accordance with the requirements of the open meeting law, please be advised that this meeting is being recorded and broadcast over the Lunenburg Public Access Channel. And the town of Lunenburg, in response to the COVID-19 pandemic, is currently following the guidance from the Lunenburg Board of Health. Massachusetts Department of Public Health and the CDC regarding the virus and steps communities can take to prevent its spread. All town facilities are now open and in accordance with the governor's order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law chapter 30A section 20, all public meetings are being conducted remotely. This meeting will be broadcast live through local access cable on Facebook live on the public access Facebook page and on YouTube live as well. And we will be able to be found on the Lunenburg Access YouTube channel within 24 hours after its conclusion. <clears throat> if you would like to participate in tonight's meeting and you have a computer, a smartphone, or a tablet, you can use the Zoom application. Tonight's webinar ID is 909-174-0347. If you'd like to participate and do not have any of those devices but have a phone, you can dial in to one 888 Four seven five four four nine nine, and once again, the webinar ID is nine zero nine one seven four zero three four seven. Please acquaint yourself with the raise your hand feature for those of you using the Zoom application. That is under the reactions button at the bottom, at least on the computer. Again, your device may differ, and if you are on the phone, you can raise your hand by dialing star nine, and I will call on people at the appropriate times. <clears throat> the agenda posted lists all the topics which may be discussed at the meeting and are those reasonably anticipated by the chair. Votes may be taken as a result of these discussions. Not all items listed may in fact be discussed and other items not listed may also be brought up for discussion to the extent permitted by the open meeting law. So I'll call tonight's uh, meeting to order by roll call, Ms. Adams. Here. Mr. Marino. Here. Mr. Dwyer. Here. Mr. Jeffries. Here. And I am here as chair. Madam Town Manager, are you here? Here. Okay. So I will now hand it off to our flag bearer and leader of the pledge, Miss Adams. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Hold on a second. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, any public comment tonight from the board? Seeing no hands. Any public comment tonight from the public? Equally seeing no hands. So announcements, of course, the big announcement is that this Saturday is elect town election day, uh, Saturday, May 15th, 2021. Somebody died in the back room of my house, so I apologize. Uh, and the polls will be open at TC Pasios from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. So again, as with town meeting, this is the chance for everybody's voice to be heard. Uh, please drive through and participate in our town and in our democracy. Any other announcements, Madam Town Manager? I'll also be discussing this in the, my COVID-19 update, but just that the regional vaccine clinic the first day will be tomorrow, and that's in Devons. They still have a number of appointments available. So um, please, if you would like to get a vaccine, um, you can go to vaxfinder.com and you can sign up for uh, an appointment at the Devons Clinic. Uh, on that note, just because you're mentioning that subject, I, I got good news in a news feed today. I think it's from the Globe, but I think Massachusetts reported zero deaths from COVID for the first time in over a year. 
So that is definitely excellent news. And certainly things going in the right direction. Hopefully we can stabilize there. Uh, no appointments for tonight. Um, interviews, appointments, reappointments, resignations. We don't have any, but I will announce here that uh, our executive director, Elaine Peterson, who takes care of our appointments for all the committees, commissions, etc. She has alerted all the chairs of bodies that have members whose terms are uh, expiring and all the people who have provided talent bank forms that the chairs of those committees should hear those interviews uh, with those people if they haven't already and they should get it back to us by Saturday and we will schedule them on our first meeting, the select board's first meeting on uh, in June. So it may tied over until the second meeting, if depending on how many appointments we have and what the agenda is. But certainly by the second meeting in June, we should have everybody who we have heard uh, wanted appointments appointed. So just be aware of that cycle. And again, as many people as we can get on the first uh, week in June, what, I'm trying to think what date that is. June 1st, I believe. Is it June 1st? Yeah, okay. So that's the schedule. So town manager report and COVID-19 update. Okay, I'll start off with the town manager report. Announcement on existing vacancies. The following is a list of current vacancies uh, that are currently vacant. The Architectural Preservation District Commission has one vacancy. The Bylaw Review Committee has two vacancies. The Economic Development Committee has one vacancy, uh, which is a, a person recommended by the Open Space Committee, one citizen at large vacancy, and one ex officio member that is a business owner. There is one vacancy on the Historical Commission, two vacancies on the Housing Authority, one vacancy on the TCP Building Design Committee, one vacancy on the Senior Work Off Program Committee, and one associate vacancy on the Zoning Board of Appeals. The following are positions whose terms are expiring on June 30th, which will create uh, positions that are available to fill. The Agricultural Commission has one position. The Architectural Preservation District Commission has one position. The Conservation Commission has two positions. Council on Aging has three positions. The Finance Committee has two positions. The Historical Commission has one position. The Public Access Cable Committee has three positions. There are town constable positions that are expiring June 30th, town clock winder positions expiring June 30th, and two positions on the Zoning Board of Appeals. Anyone interested in serving can find the application forms on the town website and completed forms can be sent to the select board's office. An update on the home rule petitions for Jack's Country Variety and the Library Trust Funds. Representative Cena's office reached out to me yesterday that our home rule petitions have been assigned bill numbers and have also been assigned to committees. The home rule petition for granting an additional license for the sale of alcoholic beverages for Jack's Country Variety has been assigned as House Bill 3715 and has been assigned to the Committee on Consumer Protection and Professional Licen Licensure. The home rule petition for authorizing the Library Board of Trustees to invest the library trust funds has been assigned as House Bill 3727 and has been assigned to the Committee on Municipalities and Regional Government. Both the Library Director and Jack's Country Variety have been notified of these updates. An update on Neshoba Valley Regional Dispatch Center. Last week, the Neshoba Valley Regional Dispatch Administration <laughs> Board voted to appoint an interim executive director until this position is permanently filled. The board met with Jack Perro and discussed his extensive background as a retired fire chief with over 40 years experience ranging from a dispatcher to fire chief in East Bridgewater and Chelmsford and now runs an independent consulting company that performs assessments and strategic plans. Mr. Perro is also an adjunct professor at Anna Maria College in fire science and emergency management. For the permanent role of executive director, 
The administration board will be discussing hiring an outside consulting service that will do the preliminary search to bring forth the most qualified candidates. We expect this process to take four to five months. An update on municipal aggregation. Colonial Power, which is our municipal aggregation energy consultant, has issued a request for proposals for electricity prices for the town's community choice power supply program. Our three-year contract with Constellation expires in November, and that current rate is um, 0.10998, so 10 cents, uh, almost 11 cents a kilowatt hour. And this program offers residents and businesses an alternative electricity supplier, and consumers can opt out or opt in at any time. Price proposals are due Monday, May 17th, and will be executed that same day. Invitation for bids that are currently um, underway or just received. We recently went out to bid for the recarpeting at the library, pro library and received seven bids. The low bidder was Liberty Floor Covering from Lincoln, Rhode Island with a bid of $46,335. The assistant town manager is currently soliciting bids for the other portion of this project, which is um, hiring a specialized moving company to move all the collections and furniture, equipment, and a phased approach while the carpet is being replaced. The public safety carport, carport project will be going out to bid next week. An update on 925 Mass Ave. The representative from Mass DEP that I had a meeting with at the end of March contacted me this week to notify me that Mass DEP has forwarded the request for funding to the Environmental Protection Agency for removal of the underground storage tanks at 925 Mass Ave. Once a decision is made by the EPA, whether the site meets the EPA's criteria for the LUS pro removal program, I will update the board at that time. An update on the conceptual design work from Monitec for the old primary building at 30 School Street. Selectman Adams and I received an email from Monty Tech CAD the Monty Tech CAD teacher this week, or sorry, this past Friday, and he relayed they should be able to provide us with an updated site plan as well as um, illustrations, CAD illustrations before the students graduate. If we do not receive these in the next week or so, we can, uh, or if we do, we receive these in the next week or so, I'm sorry. Uh, we can add these as an agenda topic for a future meeting. These would provide a good foundation for the next steps in the process in hiring a landscape engineering firm. Um, not uh, on my written report that I submitted, um, but just uh, update that I um, was done this afternoon. I Lunenburg High School students as part of her <coughs> civics class um, had requested a slideshow that she put together for her project for a civics class on plastic pollution to be put up on our website. So I uh, put that up today. And so that's on the DPW page under the trash and recycling uh, page. So you can find that and check out her, her slideshow. She did a great job. Um, her name is Emma Henry and it's um, part of the civics class was identifying a problem, trying to find a resolution. And um, her, her uh, conclusion was that more education was needed on, on this topic in order to, for people to recycle better and um, to be part of the solution um, of, of that problem. So um, please check that out. I have also been working with a, another student in the community service learning class. Um, she is looking to put up banners and foldable signs at the three different schools just on um, recycling education as yeah. well. So those are going to be funded through, your, through our recycling dividends grant <clears throat> um, and uh, those should be able to go up before the end of the year but obviously they can continue in the fall as well. In meetings, events, and other announcements, the remaining spring 2021 yard waste days are Saturday, May 15th and Saturday, May 22nd from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. More information on this can be found on the DPW page on the website. 
Uh, just as a reminder, the Pleasant Street Bridge over Pearl Brook will be closed starting June 1st. And again, the annual town election is Saturday, May 15th, uh, polls open at 7 a.m. and close at 5 p.m. Are there any questions on the report? Tom, you're muted. Any questions for the town manager on the report? No, so onward to COVID-19. Okay, thank you. The Board of Health issued their weekly update and the cumulative positive cases as of May 7th was 779. The state report showed 736 cases as of May 4th. There has been one death in town since the pandemic began due to COVID. This is an increase of seven cases since April 30th. And due to our low positivity numbers over their consecutive weeks, we are now back to gray on the positivity rate map. Another good So I, I'm gonna inter interrupt here because just like when we had the uh, Homeland Security color-coded Crayola system, I have no idea what gray means. So can you remind us what gray means? Gray is good. <laughs> is there yeah, anything where, better than gray? I think it goes um, gray, yellow, red. Oh, so gray is the lowest you can go. Yes. Okay, uh, that's what I wanted to know. Not a very cheery color for the best you can do, but okay. No, but I, yeah, red is fitting. So. But. Neshoba Valley, um, Devon's Regional Vaccine Clinic, the, an update I already um, relayed at the start of the meeting. They announced that opening of that clinic will be tomorrow, Wednesday, May 12th at the Clear Path for Veterans New England building at 84 Antietam Street in Devons. The legislators from the Shover Valley District were instrumental in getting this clinic underway and approved by the state, as was Neshoba Valley Associated Boards of Health Director Jim Gareffi and retired Groton Police Chief Don Palma. Retired Chief Palma led the creation of an operational plan and Mr. Gareffi led all the clinical aspects of running the clinic. And as I stated earlier, there are a number of appointments available and uh, please spread the word to anyone that you know that is looking to get a vaccine and they can schedule an appointment by visiting vaxfinder.mass.gov. Updates from the state, uh, the numbers for the state of Massachusetts as of May 6th, there were 650,859 positive cases, 17,311 deaths, and 21,762,513 people have been tested to date. The seven day average of percent positivity is now 1.26% in Massachusetts. The administration also announced um, they're on track with hitting their goal of uh, 4.1 million people being vaccinated. In December, the Baker Polito administration set a goal of vaccinating approximately 4 million people in the Commonwealth. And according to the CDC's vaccine data, 3.9 million have been fully or partially vaccinated as of Monday, May 3rd. Another 180,000 people are scheduled to get their first dose by May 10th. And altogether, 4.1 million people are set to be fully vaccinated by the beginning of June, reaching their initial goal and representing a significant achievement for the state of Massachusetts. While reaching 4.1 million residents vaccinated represents progress, the administration will continue to adapt vaccine efforts to be more targeted and will shift vaccines to smaller scale operations, focusing on certain populations and specific communities, such as the Commonwealth's 20 most disproportionately impacted communities. So the next phase of vaccine efforts, they'll uh, focus on providing all 22 regional collaboratives with doses to fully operate their programs doubling the state vaccine allocation for our 20 most dis disproportionately impacted communities, work with Massachusetts Medical Society to increase access of vaccines with additional primary care providers by mid-May. This effort will require affirming complex storage and scheduling logistics to ensure that all doses are put to good use. 
expanding mobile vaccine clinics in our 20 most disproportionately impacted communities at senior centers, houses of worship, and other community-based organizations, and work with current providers and community partners to offer new vaccine clinic opportunities. The administration will also begin to transition or ramp down the state's seven mass vaccination sites. With millions of people vaccinated, the demand of for high volumes at the mass vaccination sites will gradually decline and more vaccines will be dispersed more widely across communities. The administration will gradually close for the state's seven mass vaccination sites by the end of June, including Gillette Stadium, Heinz Convention Center, Doubletree and Danvers, and the Natick Mall. With the approval by the FDA to authorize vaccines for children ages 12 to 15, Pre-registration will remain available for parents who may want to bring their children to a mass vaccination site. Regarding walk-ups starting May 10th, beginning on Monday, May 10th, six of the Commonwealth's mass vaccination sites will be open for walk-up vaccination. These sites include the Heinz Convention Center, the Reggie Lewis Center in Roxbury, the Doubletree in Danvers, the former Circuit City in Dartmouth, the Eastfield Mall in Springfield, and the Natick Mall. Residents should still go to VaxFinder to find a location near them and plan their vaccination. Residents will be able to use each site's VaxFinder listing to either book appointments or view more details about walk-up appointments. And VaxFinder also lists important information like each site's accessibility options, uh, MBTA trip planner, and more. Over 500 locations have open availability on VaxFinder. That's all my... COVID-19 related updates for tonight. Any questions for the town manager on that report? None. Well, that all seems like positive news, which is good. Talking about positive news, current business, how about an update on trash and recycling services? <laughs> all right, so I just wanted to give a verbal update on um, the status and what the timeline is looking like for trash and recycling services because we're coming up on the, the end of our contract with Casella on June 30th. So a notice of award was issued this week to EL Harvey, this is the company that bid on this service. And the, the timeline for the contract should be finalized uh, hopefully by next week for, and it would be a three-year contract. The public education and outreach that will be needed to be performed by E.L. Harvey will happen for the rest, the remaining of May and uh, all of June. So that will be making sure everyone knows um, the transition, who the company, what they can expect um, for that continued service of uh, pickup for both trash and recycling. So a couple of questions. Are there any anticipated changes from well, first of all, the first important thing people are going to want to know is are the schedules for streets going to change? They are the, all those um, details remain the same. Okay. So the, the hours of operation <laughs> will remain the same. So um, that will be continuous. Okay. And are there any known things that we know are going to change? Or is everything expected? Everything that the, the residents are doing already, is it going to, is it expected that they will remain the same? I'll, um, the details of bringing, you know, um, when you need to have your trash out and recycling out will remain the same. We know that obviously the cost of the bags is gonna increase um, due to this, the proposal. And the, so that is all going to be, um, uh, worked out through now until the end of June. And um, we'll try to give us plenty of notice about bag prices as possible, but anticipated that it will be between a 30 and 40% increase in costs. Um, so more of uh, the public outreach will be like, you know, they'll be seeing a new truck obviously, um, but it will be advertised, you know, for the town of Lunenburg that it's, um, that they're there to pick up uh, for. Um, 
and just more customer service number, who they need to contact. Um, Yale Harvey, um, when, when we did our reference checks on them, they have, uh, we were told they have outstanding customer service. So really looking forward to um, starting that new relationship with this company and uh, getting that information out to everyone as who they need to contact in, in the event of a, a missed pickup or anything like that. But, Excellent. Um, so also related to that, in the meantime, we'll be soliciting bids for the bag vendors. And this information is critical to determine the, the impact on the bag costs. So um, in operating the, the trash program. So um, that will be um, figured out um, in the near future. And that uh, information will play into what is being, um, will be announced as far as cost of the bags. So this is a good opportunity, of course, you and I have spoken, but it's a good opportunity to make sure that the large bags, not the extra large, but the large bags fit the trash barrels that everyone has. That was the, that yeah. complaint and the fact that the drawstring's breaking. So if we can- 34 by 34 is a large, yeah. Well, I just, you know, the, I'll, I'll be the first to say that the measurement is irrelevant to me. I just want them to fit when I put them on. So whatever fits. Uh, Miss Adams. Uh, yes, I have a question with the um, bags in terms of the vendor changing. If somebody is like well stocked and keeps a lot of bags, is there ever a possibility that the yellow bags they have won't be accepted? Um, you know, and vice versa, could people start hoarding bags at a cheaper price? I just feel like there's so much transitioning. How do we manage um, the bag part of it? Is, you know, do you, are you prepared for like a run on bags type of scenario? Um, I mean, they would be honored, the bags that people purchase for, um, if they did have already purchased those, so they would be honored. Okay. Why did, why did you hold bags? Or? No, I couldn't actually get some the last time I shopped. So I didn't know like if, you know, if, if there's a, a, a shift in bags or something goes up and down. I mean, it, it's the fastest thing to hit Facebook up until recently. And um, it, it's just, it's a true, you can't get your, you know, your trash uh, where it needs to go. And so if people pick up on, um, you know, all these different changes or watch the meetings and, and things like that, um, I just don't know if we need to order extra or sort of be prepared for some sort of uh, shift here. I was kidding, but I buy a lot because they, they are hard to get sometimes. Oh, so you're hoarding them at the lower price. <laughs> well, that's why you can't. <laughs> yeah, who knows what's going to happen? You know, it's a a big change. And it's, it's, I, I've always said one of the most important jobs is trash removal. It's the thing that impacts people's day the most when it doesn't happen. Um, you don't hear people complain that their doctor ran a half hour late, but if trash isn't, you know, worked in an efficient way, it really, it gets in the way of people's days, which is why we talk about it a lot. But I mean, it's a real public health, um, achievement of, you know, a couple hundred years ago that we have all these services, but when we have a hiccup in them, it certainly disturbs the, uh, disturbs the community. So if I need trash bags, I guess I'll call you. <laughs> <laughs> having lived, having lived through the, uh, garbage strike in New York city, one of my first year in college and what it looks like in New York city when six weeks of garbage doesn't get picked up, uh, yeah, I would say that garbage has a big impact on people's lives. <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah, it's tremendous. And and uh, and I when I studied public health, these things like this they were novel ideas. You know, we take everything for granted as we've advanced, but some of these things transformed public health. But you see how vital it is, and it's it truly is a almost a funny topic. And lately, when people complain. Um, about Casella, I just in my back of my mind, I think, well, somebody new is coming, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's better. You know, it's just a complex, it's a complex, uh, complex space. So, mm -hmm. Mr. Dwyer, head in uh, I got a text from a resident who was wondering if uh, uh, 
trash cans are going to be included in the contract. They are not included in the contract. Thank you. The additional costs. Okay. Uh, approve the minutes of April 27th and May 4th. We have all received those. I think there were some changes during the week that Elaine sent around. So unless somebody has any edits or changes they want to make, I would entertain a motion regarding the minutes of April 27th and May 4th, 2021. I would make a motion that we approve said minutes. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, any further discussion? All those in favor, Mr. Dwyer. Aye. Mr. Marino. Aye. Ms. Adams. Mr. Jeffries. Aye. And an aye from me. Uh, warrants, we have one uh, in our Google Drive. It's a warrant. Uh, this is, I haven't signed this one yet. Right, Madam Town Manager? Correct. Yeah. So this is the fourth water water commitment. Um, this is not, again, uh, we always say this, not to be confused with the water district. This is our water department. So the few residences and businesses on our water system down at the corner of town. So this is the amount of $7,560.78. So I will, uh, I will sign that unless somebody has an objection to me signing the water commitment for the fourth quarter. And hearing none. Okay. Uh, action items. Any action items? Mr. Jeffries. Yeah, for the town manager. Um, after we, you and I last spoke, I got a. I was contacted by a resident to report that. The uh, infamous uh, clothing bins in the Walmart parking lot that they're uh, all over the place, uh, that, you know, so I'm not sure what we can do about that, but uh, are you able to reach out to them and just remind them to stay on top of that? We can contact them. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other action items? Any committee reports? None. Old business. Discuss and approve the composite Tom town manager performance evaluation. Everybody, this was released at our meeting last week. I did not see receive anything. Uh, uh, to for any edits to do. I did make one one modification of uh, one word. And so the final one in there was changed as of 6.30. And it was just one word after review that I thought was more accurate. Uh, it's on, on section four, and I will tell you what the change is when we get there. So I think uh, what we will do is I will go through this and read the grade the scores the numeric scores and then the narratives without objection okay so part one the performance on prior year goals so we reviewed the town managers prior year goals and the status of those goals last week we were presented with those from the town manager herself so in summary Goal number one was continuation of the goal to redevelop and reuse 925 Mass Ave. That is continues to be in, in progress. It is a lengthy, lengthy goal that's been multi-year, but it is continuing to make very good progress. Goal number two, enhanced facilities management and maintenance. That is also in progress and likely will be continued over to this next year, although the goals will not be decided until... Um, middle of June. And lastly, the third goal of succession planning was in progress with some good written uh, outlines and frameworks being done, I think, with the Collins Institute. So that will probably continue as well. As a general consensus comment, the select board was pleased with the progress made on admittedly large multi-year tasks. 
With all the work of running the town and with the additional significant burden of the pandemic, the fact that these goals were advanced to the degree they were, was broadly noted and appreciated. Now in part two, there are eight sections and each section has a numeric rating from zero to four, zero being unsatisfactory, four being consistently exceeds expectations. The other ones being one needs improvement, two meets expectations, three often exceeds expectations and four consistently exceeds expectations. Each one of the members of the board rated the town manager on each of those eight categories on that scale. And the composite shows the averaging of those scores. And then the narrative that is included in the composite is a basically an overview of all the members' comments in an attempt again to capture the spirit of everybody's intent. So we will start with number one is individual characteristics and professionalism. Um, I will read the bullets because otherwise for the people seeing it for the first time, it may not make sense. So the bullet points here of what the grading should include uh, is that the town manager is dedicated to the highest ideals of honor and integrity in all public and per personal relationships in order to merit the respect and confidence of the elected officials, other officials and employees and of the public. Demonstrates accountability for actions, conducts himself, herself fairly and honestly. Bullet two. Treats others in a fair, consistent, impartial, and professional manner. Is effective in dealing with people without arousing antagonism and demonstrates an understanding of difficult situations. Bullet three maintains an open and approachable manner, presents a positive outlook, and sets an example for subordinates. The composite rating was 3.8, which is between the meets ex uh, often and consistently exceeds expectations. The narrative comment. The town manager is a consummate professional who projects a positive and respectful disposition in all our professional dealings with Lunenburg residents and employees. She is responsive to all calls, texts, and emails and maintains her poise even in difficult situations while being consistently fair, impartial, and honest with everyone. She personally exhibits the highest levels of honesty, integrity, and ethics and makes it clear that she expects the same from others in the town organization. I will pause at the end of each section in case any member wants to comment or anything. Okay. Section two, problem solving, decision-making and planning. Uh, bullet points for this category. Anticipates and analyzes problems to develop effective approaches for solving them. Willing to try new ideas proposed by the board members and or staff. Bullet two, anticipates future needs, organizes work operations and establishes timetables for work units or projects. Is aware of technological advances and changing standards, identifies and understands trends, effectively allocates resources and predicts the impact of the service delivery decisions. Bullet three, knows when to take action and what type of action is appropriate. Bullet four, effectively allocates resources to provide service to the community anticipate stakeholder needs and, and attitudes and the impact of policies and procedures and responds appropriately. The composite rating for this is 2.95, which is just shy of often exceeds expectations. The narrative. The town manager position is by very definition one of planning, decision-making and problem solving. This past year, however, was certainly one that made those needs an even greater necessity and more valuable commodity. The pandemic has challenged the town manager in dealing with all normal operations of the town and the ever-changing landscape of a world living with a virus that has affected every part of our social, educational, medical, political, and municipal life. Heather has been extremely effective in keeping operations running smoothly while planning for the town's future, while also ensuring that all local, state, and federal health guidelines are being followed. However, while the above is unanimously accepted, there was a minority sentiment that not enough focus is being placed on properly managing and protecting municipal buildings, the town's largest capital investment. While the handling of other departments exceeded expectations, the DPW especially with regards to these buildings 
requires more attention and resources. Ms. Adams. Sure, I know you mentioned the decimal system um, last week um, in terms of somebody broke down the rating into decimals. I just, and it's not really that big of a problem if you round up everything's heading towards a, a four or three or something anyways, but just in, in the sense of, of being on the same page um, when we go through the process again, or, or if, you know, when the process has gone through again, um, I don't know that maybe it's best that we stick with the whole numbers in the sense that the scale didn't offer the opportunity to use decimals. Well, for the individual reports, I agree. Uh, I mean, the composite is by definition going to have decimals because people will be between. But yes, I will make that a point when we go over that, that I think okay. there's, there was, we'll clarify it that, that there should be whole numbers, yes. Okay, section three, professional skills and knowledge. Um, the bullet points here, maintains knowledge of current developments affecting the practice of local government management and is familiar with applicable local, state, and federal legislation and regulations related to town services. Demonstrates skill in listening, speaking, and writing, persuading without diminishing the views of others. Has a full working knowledge of the administrative and management systems and procedures. And the final bullet, understands and implements long-range and strategic planning techniques identifies trends that will affect the community, demonstrates an understanding and ability to analyze and facilitate policy choices that will benefit the community in the long run. The composite numeric rating for here is 3.4, again, between often and uh, consistently exceeds expectations. The narrative here, the select board clearly recognizes that the town and all of its residents greatly benefit from the knowledge, skills, and experience of our town manager. During the challenges of the past year, gathering knowledge seemed like a daily task with the whirlwind of information coming from the state and federal agencies regarding the virus and the policy changes instituted at all governmental levels to deal with it. With her leadership, local policies and procedures have adapted to the changes extremely well and efficiently. Additionally, the town manager continually works to develop new skills and hone existing ones by regularly participating in professional development programs through the MMA and the MMPA the small town administrators meeting and attends biweekly briefings with state officials. Her budgeting of departments and capital items remain flexible throughout the budget process, constantly adapting to the best information available at the time. Moving on to section four, organizational leadership and personnel management. Bullet points, builds cooperation and consensus among and within diverse groups helping them identify common goals and act effectively to achieve them, recognizes interdependent relationships and multiple causes of community issues, and anticipates the consequences of policy decisions. Bullet two encourages the development and high level performance of staff and employees throughout the organization, effectively selects and hires employees for position vacancies. Bullet three professionally manages the compensation and benefits plan. Bullet four, develops and executes sound personnel procedures and practices, seeks to foster high morale and cohesiveness among employees. Bullet four, effectively plans, organizes and delegates work, monitors results and evaluates performance of those supervised and provides feedback in a timely manner. Composite rating of 3.1. Again, this uh, in the narrative, this past year has been uniquely challenging as the town has navigated through the pandemic. The town manager has expertly managed the town through potential bu budget challenges, including union nego uh, contract negotiations, where she promotes ideas and policies that support her goal of maintaining a professional and competitively paid workforce, and changes in several key department head positions. The town manager conducts regular department head meetings to identify the similarities and goals common among these diverse groups and encourages more direct communications between them. By bringing the department heads together regularly, the town manager effectively creates a pool of shared resources that each may not have realized were available to them. She promotes employee development, encourages morale, and how important morale is under times like these, and continues to hire very qualified people for open and new positions. 
On that last point, there was some sharp contrast in comments by some select board members. Well, one comment praised her development of a non-political hiring process for three important positions this past year. Another thought that process was not transparent enough with the select board not playing a larger and more visible role. Some other minority criticisms in this category included the town manager having subpar oversight of one department, the lack of employee climate survey to determine employee satisfaction and the town hall still being open only four days a week. The one modification I made from last week to this week was the changing of the oversight. I had listed certain departments, but in reviewing that section, it really was only one department that was commented. So I changed it to one department. Section five, community and public relations. Bullet points, understands the basic principles of service delivery in functional areas, e.g. public safety, community and economic development, human and social services, administration, and public works. Bullet two, provides responsive, equitable service to town residents and instills the value of good customer service in staff. Bullet point three, communicates effectively with the public, maintains respectful, polite, and civil speech and demeanor in dealings with all. Bullet point four, maintains good working relationship with legislators, media, and public groups and organizations, as well as with other regional, state, and federal government agencies. Composite rating of a 3.6. The narrative, the town manager has consistently demonstrated an outstanding ability to take residents' concerns seriously. Regardless of the issue raised, she responds quickly, politely, accurately, and professionally. She is an excellent point of contact for the public and community, maintains positive relationships with all members of the community and our state delegation, and is an outstanding representative of the select board as head of our day-to-day -day municipal government. Section number six, fiscal management, bullet points. Prepares and administers the budget, shows knowledge of budgeting principles and practices, revenue sources, projection techniques, and financial control systems, presents information in an intelligent and accessible format. Bullet point two, makes the best possible use of available funds, conscious of the need to operate the local government efficiently and effectively, determines the cost effectiveness of programs and compares alternative strategies. Bullet point three, as chief procurement officer effectively manages town purchasing of supplies and services, disposition of town property and construction projects. And bullet point four, establishes and manages sound fiscal policies, including the five-year financial forecast, financial policies, and the capital plan. The composite rating from the board was a perfect four. The select board in the narrative unanimously recognizes the town manager's stellar proficiency in fiscal management and her ability to maintain fiscal discipline to keep the town on solid financial footing. The recent audit of the town's finances conducted by Powers and Sullivan were noted by many as an undeniable indication of that proficiency, financial leadership and vision of not only her, but the entire finance team. The method, methods and expectations employed to achieve these ends are distributed throughout the organization by communicating well-defined financial policies to departments, providing clear budget targets, and by challenging department heads to be innovative and flexible when considering budget priorities. Section seven, relations with members of the board, bullet points. Maintains effective communication with the board maintains mutual trust and treats all board members equally. Bullet point two offers professional advice to the board on items requiring board action with appropriate recommendations and supporting information based on thorough study and analysis. And bullet point three responds well to requests, advice and constructive criticism. Composite rating here is 3.4. The town manager consistently communicates to the board on all pertinent issues and handles each member of the select board equitably. She typically responds same day to all requests and has a very healthy and professional relationship with all board members. For those issues that require additional research, she makes sure to get the answers to questions asked and to follow up with the person making the inquiry. 
She is always open to discussion regarding issues board members might raise and always treats them professionally and with due attention, offering her own opinions and insights when applicable. The last section in this part, section eight is reporting and the bullet points provides regular information and reports to the board concerning matters of importance to the local government using the town charter as a guide. Bullet point two, reports produced by the manager are accurate, comprehensive, concise, and written to their intended audience. Bullet point three, produces and handles reports in a way to convey the message that affairs of the organization are open to public scrutiny. Composite rating here is 3.8. And the comments from the board are that the town manager report and the COVID-19 updates have been a consistent ongoing space where relevant items are communicated to the board and the residents in a timely and concise manner. These reports have kept both the select board and the community at large well informed on all issues before the town. When asked questions, she demonstrates that she knows the material she is presenting and her answers are clear on on point. She responds to action items quickly and keeps the board informed of changes or progress through email. Legal or procedural questions are, answer, are answered during the meeting where possible or via email shortly afterward following her consultation with the proper people. Part three. Part three is the overall performance summary. And there are three sections here, or three categories. The first one is best achievement. So the board in their composite narrative says that the select board clearly agreed that the town manager's best achievement was the hard work and dedication in navigating through the, navigating through the ever-changing landscape of medical, fiscal, political, and social information coming at her and uh, an extreme, during an extremely challenging pandemic year. She did so with a poised demeanor by managing an excellent staff and with minimizing anxiety, utilizing up-to-date information sharing. Through all this uncertainty, she still maintained excellent fiscal strategies, procedures, and budgets that keep the town on solid ground. Uh, next heading, subject which would benefit most from further attention. There was no real consensus of any particular area on which the town manager should focus, should focus more time, resources, or attention. Among the several areas that were mentioned by specific board members are, in no particular order, A, facilities, building and property management, care and planning. Letter B, personnel management. C, making the accomplishments of her and her staff more publicly known. And D, time management, specifically working to reduce hours spent in board committee and commission meetings when and where possible by working with those bodies to maximize her effectiveness while minimizing her time. And the last section in this part is general comments. The select board unanimously agrees that the town manager has done an outstanding job and is a true asset to the town. She is committed to performing to the highest professional standards and shows an admirable ability to adapt to all of the unique changes this year has brought while staying focused on Lunenburg's ongoing needs. Her experience, depth of knowledge, preparedness, foresight, and work ethic and work flexibility are nothing short of exemplary. We all feel the town of Lunenburg is fortunate to have her at the helm and encourage her to keep up the good work. And that was the only exclamation point in the whole document, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> that is the document in its entirety. Uh, I would open it up to, oh, I see we are right up there. I don't have to ask. Ms. Adams. Okay, first, um, I, I said this last week, but more so now. Um, Thank you, because taking all of ours and creating this, it's like probably having like a term paper due or something like that. Um, and the, um, I feel like it's, it's come a long ways just in, in the work that we did to create a structure for it, but thank you for putting it together. Um, and then I, is this a good time for just input on it? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, but input on this document or the process? Let me just ask um, Input on the document um, overall. Um, 
I just wanted to share for me what, so we all ended up with um, three, you know, there was Heather went through these questions herself, rated herself. We all went through it individually, did our rating, and then Tom made the composite. Um, and so when Heather went through the document on her own and rated herself, there was a part that um, stuck out to me as the most important, um, or I guess the most impactful part of her self-evaluation was the comments from section four, which was organizational leadership and personal management. And I don't have the exact quote from- Yeah, well, first of all, I'm gonna just stop for a second because remember that the other documents are not public. So you can summarize in a, in a sentiment in them, but please do not, do not read verbatim from those documents because they those documents are not public documents. That's what I was just saying, Tom. Okay. Right. No, no, I just wanted <laughs> um, to be clear I was saying, and I just literally said, I'm not quoting exactly from it, but what impacted me the most was, um, and it's really not about the evaluation itself, it's just about the year that we've just um, documented here, was that it was the most challenging year ever as a manager because you had to find the empathy in running the town and the departments for the variety of views that people were functioning under. And we've all experienced that in our own lives, people who aren't worried, people who are worried, people who are sick, people who have been sick. And so to put yourself in a management role or any role, but especially in a management role where people have very conflicting feelings towards what's going on. And one of our most challenging years I've experienced. And so for me, that part was just, um, I guess I reflected upon a lot of things in a different sort of way that a lot of people were given the impossible this year. And while you're balancing all these things in our workspaces, um, everything was sort of also upside down at home with, with kids out of school and things. So I just truly, um, uh, truly want to thank you for um, everything that's gone on this year in the sense that there was never a right answer. And then it was impossible to be consistent because the mandates and circumstances were always changing. And what really drew me to this part of it tonight is, you know, we're all feeling optimistic. Things are opening. We're in the gray. And then I got a text from my mother that uh, just during this meeting, um, somebody from my childhood neighborhood went off in an ambulance tonight with a extremely low pulse ox, incoherent with she's had COVID for about a week. So here we've gone an entire over a year without a problem. And then I'm thinking, oh good, everything's looking up. And then I'm like, oh, maybe, maybe things are, you know, the same as they were. So if operating a town under everything we've been through, um, I just say thank you because um, uh, I can't imagine starting each day with, with a new set of new set of rules and all the different departments that are constantly adapting to them. So uh, yeah, no job well done. I think it was just such an incredible year. And I think we'll look back on that year more and realize how adaptive everybody was and how incredible it was that we were able to hold so many things together. And so, yeah, so it's just a, basically a thank you. Um, my only other comment for the composite is some of the talk around um, building management and um, I just wanted to say from my perspective, we have been doing um, some pretty good capital improvement projects um, on the buildings and that a lot of the building management issues, I, I think are a little um, more in, in the town's wheelhouse and that um, she's a victim to all of our indecision um, and probably doing the best she can with all of that. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? I would thank Ms. Adam for her kind words uh, on the work. It, it felt a little bit like a term paper, yes, to answer your comments. Uh, Mr. Dwyer. Uh, thanks, Mr. Chair. Uh, I just wanna say uh, this kind of rounds out my uh, first year on the select board. And I just, I, I just wanna thank Heather for making this part uh, of the job very easy. Um, I, I agree with the, the consensus of the, uh, the review. I think you've done an excellent job in the face of a lot of adversity. And so, so thank you for doing a great job and keep up the good work. Thank you. Anybody else? 
Before I turn it over to the town manager and ask if she has any comments about it, I will say that uh, a glowing report like this is a double-edged sword because everybody recognizing that this was a particularly special year filled with craziness, extra craziness, that if you could come through in such glowing ways with this, when everything kind of settles down, imagine what we're going to expect from you next year. So <laughs> with all your free time. <laughs> so yeah, that's right. Uh, the bar is set up. Yeah, exactly. The bar is set exactly. Up now. <laughs> <laughs> but I will turn it over to you, Madam Town Manager, if you would like. I feel no obligation, but I would like if you would like to comment or not. Yeah, I would um, say hope we don't have a repeat of this year by this time next year. Um, so hopefully there's large improvements um, where we're at next year this time next year. Um, I want to thank the board. Uh, for all your thoughtful uh, reflection and comments to me, um, some constructive criticism, which I always welcome because I always think there's room for improvement in all of our jobs um, and what we do. And um, appreciate the one-on-one -on -one meetings. Uh, I really get a lot of value out of those as well. Um, and um, perhaps in the future, can make those a little more frequent as well because um, that feedback was really valuable to me, not part of the process. So I want to thank you and um, appreciate the, the kind words and the um, accolades and um, as well as the constructive criticism for certain pieces. So thank you. All right. Already working on next year is by filling in that category. Accepting mm -hmm. constructive criticism. <laughs> Always thinking ahead. That's why you're good in your job. Okay. Um, I always feel this as, as chair, I always feel a sense of relief when this is done because getting everybody, I thank everybody on the board and the town manager for adhering to the timeline. Last year, of course, with everything changing, we blew by the timeline and it got to be a really kind of troubling process with, with, everything happening but thank you in a time like this that everybody got them to me and we were able to fulfill the deadline and put together the document okay next section upcoming meetings and events well if you weren't here from the beginning of the meeting uh, i will remind people again and the town manager did in her report as well so third time is the charm town election is uh, this saturday uh may 15th at Polls open at TC Pasio, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. So, uh, any public comment from the public? Seeing no hands. And any public comment from the board? Also seeing no hands, a record breaking one hour and three minutes. Very impressive. Okay. Uh, I would entertain our next meeting will be next Tuesday, May 18th, uh, right here on Zoom. So, and then our next meeting after that is June 1st, as we talked about. So, I would entertain a motion, seeing no other discussion points and the agenda being fulfilled, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Sure, I will make a motion that we adjourn. Okay, do I have a second? Second. All right, roll call, Mr. Dwyer. Aye. Mr. Marino. Aye. Ms. Adams. Aye. Mr. Jeffries. Aye. And an aye for me, so good night, everyone. Uh, to Ms. Adams, I hope your friend does well. I, we wish her the best uh, on this. Yeah, tour. it was just an extremely surprising text. Thank you. It's, you know, just when everything's looking up and, and uh, hopefully she'll be okay. She's an elderly woman and, and she's been following it for a week. But thank you. Yeah, no, it's, it's a, a been a strange year. Certainly don't need a... a and with that in mind, of course, I would continue with the sign off that, you know, take, take care of yourselves and certainly take care of each other. We will see you next Tuesday. Good night. Right. Good night. Good night. Good night.